So, uh, welcome to the 10th geopolymer camp. Um, I just start always the camp with the state of the geopolymer research and development, that is what we consider to have been important during uh, this year or during the last geopolymer camp. Uh, it comprises three parts. Geopolymer in the global economy. Uh, I present uh, three major research topics, one on geopolymer in acidic medium and one on uh, nanomaterials. And then uh, finished uh, this uh, day with uh, ancient geopolymers in South American monuments, exploring the site of Pumba Punku, Tiwanaku at the Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. Geopolymer conferences started uh, 30 years ago, first in 1988 in Compiègne, University of Technology, then the second 11 years later in 1999 here in St. Quentin, then the third was in Melbourne in 2002, so it was the interval between each conference uh, became uh, smaller and smaller. 2005, we had our international conference in St. Quentin and Perth in Australia, and then in 2009, we decided to stop making regular conferences and to start the first geopolymer camp. 2018, it is our 10th. And since uh, 2009, there have been several national geopolymer camps that have been organized uh, by other institutions. Since uh, the beginning, the geopolymer camp is not a uh, uh, regular scientific congress, it is something totally different. Uh, it is a low cost, casual and informal meeting. We don't pay $800, $1,000 or $2,000, uh, which I consider as a nonsense. Uh, we do not publish any uh, proceedings to avoid these uh, scandalous costs asked for publishing even uh, in low quality open access platform with weak review. Problem of reviews is really something that I consider very, very, very uh, shocking from my point of view. Uh, it is the desire to learn, to share in an open environment. Uh, the attendance embraces a large range of backgrounds. Two thirds are from the industry or independent and one-third are academics worldwide. Uh, it has become for strong business. Uh, we have uh, people from raw materials, chemical industries, commercial applications that are meeting each other, and we have academics who are coming here in order to meet with the industry. In other uh, geopolymer conferences, you only have academics turning into a round, and there is no contact with the exterior. And uh, four years ago, we started uh, a workshop for the first day and on Monday. And it is something that uh, 40 of you experienced yesterday. And uh, each, we select uh, scientific uh, communication that we consider to be important and present them as a keynote. And these keynotes are video recorded and uh, are really well watched on the internet. So it started in 1988. This has been the number, not of participants, of, of, but of research institutions that were involved in. And this is uh, what we have presently. Of course, the increase in laboratories has an input in the numbers of scientific works. Uh, we started 1991. 1991, this is my first official scientific publication. And uh, during a long time, we were practically one or two or three publications per year. And it started to climb. And in 2008, it was uh, the issue of my first geopolymer book, geopolymer and chemistry applications. And since that, the increase has been exponential. 
uh, on our Geopolymer Institute site, you have a lot of documents that you can uh, free download, technical papers, archaeological papers, as well as videos. As I told you, all our keynotes are video recorded and they are well watched. watched. Uh, we have uh, the special keynotes so that uh, are uh, watched uh, in the range of 1,000 to 2,000 times in a year. This is a lot. It is more than a, just a small publication in a scientific paper. Uh, my web webinars, internet webinars, uh, have also their uh, videos available on the internet. And there is the uh, series of uh, four videos that are dedicated to the topic why alkali activated materials are not geopolymers. This is for us and for me very important. Uh, this uh, series comprises four parts. The first one in 2014. It has been watched more than 16,000 times at our Geopolymer Institute. And we put it later uh, at, in YouTube and it has been watched more than uh, 7,500 times, which is a lot. Part uh, 2, uh, we put it on 2015, clarifying statement and historicity. Part 3, in 2016, these are always excerpts of my uh, keynote. What scientists write on these issues. And part 4, last year, last words. Today, this is uh, from theory to global industrialization. We have a series of international conferences. I've been invited uh, by the MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, to lead a seminar by uh, the Department of Material Science and Engineering. And it was the topic was from theory to global industrialization. And since we were in the US, we went to a famous university, University of Illinois, with our friend uh, Professor Creven, and we presented also a seminar at uh, the US Army Corps of Engineers Research Center. Uh, this has followed uh, in February, in January, uh, with uh, now annual uh, convention in Florida, at Daytona Beach, where uh, Professor Creven uh, organized the geopolymer session. Then we had our uh, geopolymer camp. And then I was invited uh, by uh, the uh, Japan Concrete Institute, and this was the series of my talk in the Far East, followed by a stop in uh, Hong Kong, at the Hong Kong Science Park, which is a beautiful park, uh, where I met with uh, the geopolymer team, geopolymer concrete team at NAMI, uh, Nano and Advanced Materials Institute Limited. We have here representatives of uh, Hong Kong that uh, uh, have been also involved in this project. And it ended with a talk, a seminar at uh, Universidad Católica San Pueblo Arequipa, Peru, because Peru, Arequipa is our partner in our, the archaeological project. So, we have geopolymer binder, geopolymer resin. I always repeat the same. We don't have a geopolymer at large. We have geopolymer binder, we have geopolymer resin, geopolymer paint, geopolymer coating, geopolymer grout. These are commercial products. Geopolymer foam, geopolymer cement, geopolymer concrete, geopolymer carbon composite, and geopolymer ceramics. Uh, for uh, geopolymer in alkaline medium, so I, I hope uh, you'll see it on the screen, uh, we have a rule that is based on the ratio SIL. So we start on the bottom SIL1 and SIL2. These are cross-linked structures uh, for uh, brick, ceramics, cement, and then we increase uh, the SIAL uh, ratio, 3 to 1. Then this is uh, material to make uh, two links for the industry. And if we increase uh, the ratio SIAL above 3, then we start to enter into high-tech applications 
for aircraft, Formula One racing cars, and cabin safety. How does it start? I repeat it again because it is important to know why geopolymer has been developed. Uh, my background is organic chemistry. I am a polymer chemist. And in 1970, we have been struck by a very big uh, fire that, uh, by which uh, more than 150 young people died in a nightclub because of plastic furnitures and plastic decorations. We discovered that plastics are dangerous. Uh, I raised the questions, are organic polymers heat resistant? And uh, well, nature states, no. Only minerals provide fire and heat resistance. So my target was mineral polymers. I knew that I had uh, uh, other scientists claiming or stating, well, there's no problem, we'll add uh, additives to the organic uh, and they will be uh, uh, fire resistant, flame retardant, but these additives are also poisoning. So geopolymers are, we don't use the word inorganic polymers, like some uh, scientists are doing because uh, it includes a too large number of materials. For example, polysulfur is an inorganic polymer, polyphosphine, metal are polymers. There are some we have uh, and so forth. And in uh, uh, geology, you'll find uh, uh, polymers, organic mineral polymers that are also inorganic polymers. So using the word geo, or mineral is focusing on one type of non-organic material, so don't use inorganic. Uh, it is too large and uh, means anything which does not contain carbon. So be specific and use uh, the word geopolymer instead. So geopolymers are polymers, process like organic polymers, Yet they are geopolymers, that is fire and heat resistant. In my chapter 22, I am a dedicated uh, uh, fire and heat resistance, especially here for geopolymer 4. We had a licensee, a German chemical company, which had a startup company called Trollit in 1987. This is a long time ago. Five years later, they closed it because the materials that had been developed was too expensive when compared to regular plastic or Portland cement foam. I guess you have seen all that in the news last year. 80 people died. Is it too expensive? It could have been protected by new geopolymer foam panels instead of cheap, plastic, organic. So I will present now a list of applications. There are numerous. And just to select very, very briefly so that you are aware that there are a lot. Uh, of course, Wagner's early earthly Earth-friendly concrete, fly ash slag-based geopolymer. Uh, grout, and developed by the BISF, geopolymer grout and binder. Millican USA, geopolymer mortar systems and grout for rehabilitation. Uh, chemical, ISK chemical Germany, inorganic binder system, geopolymer binder for foundries. Uh, Pyromeral system France, this is our uh, company. Uh, high-tech, high-temperature structural geopolymer composite materials for automotive aircraft industries. Uh, I composite island, these are making tools, heated geopolymer composite tooling for manufacture of large composite structures. Airbus aircraft conduct of geopolymer carbon composite, 
Schlumberger France Tampable Geopolymer Formulation for Oil Field Application. These are real commercialized products. Rockwool Australia Geopolymer Rockwool Briquettes used to recycle unused fibers. Scroburn Germany Fireproof Condensing Chimney for Hot Gas Exhaust made of geopolymer foam. Uh, Makani Panels Precast Geopolymer Panels. Renka Risha, the guys here. Uh, 3D printer uh, building development. Uh, Corning USA, these are geopolymer ceramic composites. A dark chemical uh, geopolymer coating for organic polymer substrates. Uh, Orexo, this is a composition for sustained drug delivery comprising geopolymer binder. Uh, Inomat Germany, fire resistant geopolymer. Uh, Sinotech Germany, very rigid acid proof, rigid anti corrosive geopolymer coating. Uh, Czech Republic Geopol geopolymer sand binder for cores in foundries. Uh, Nova Lignig in Netherlands geopolymer composite siding and facet claddings. Uh, Nanovoltaic USA nanoporous geopolymer composite for use in water treatment. A light uh, foam USA geoform geopolymer foam. Uh, well, uh, uh, ready to use alkali silicate to, for geopolymers. Uh, Vodnis Klo, Czech Republic, uh, geopolymer by the system for foundries. Reinforced concrete pipes, uh, watershed material, geopolymer blocks made out of clay. Uh, Bro industrial uh, concrete for acid resistant applications. Aqua mineral Finland system solution for water purifications. And this uh, very important one, Amec Foster Wheeler, a uh, specialized geopolymer technique for encapsulating various radioactive waste streams. And then decorative architectural geopolymer binder panels for inside and outside. And last, geobiology applications. So this is a small selected list and there are more. My state of uh, the geopolymer uh, research and development 2018 usually comprises four parts. One, geopolymer science, geopolymer technologies, geopolymer cement and concrete, and geopolymer and archaeology. We will not have geopolymer technologies, only science, cement, and archaeology. Geopolymer science. <coughs> In 2008, that is 10 years ago, uh, we had our big international congress on ceramics in Verona, Italy, and I had been asked to present a roadmap, research and development for geopolymer. So I made a, a list of 15 research topics that should be researched during this last this decade. First, polymeric character of geopolymers. This is the one that I will show you today. Second, polysiloxonate, these are the soluble silicate, metacholine based geopolymer, calcium based geopolymer, rock based geopolymer, silica based geopolymer, fly ash based geopolymer, phosphate based geopolymer, this is the one that we will also tackle today, organic mineral geopolymer, long term durability, geopolymer fiber composites, geopolymer ceramic processing, the manufacture of geopolymer cement and concrete, this will be the third topic today, and uh, materials for radioactive and nuclear waste. Let's start with the polymeric character of geopolymers. This is my chapter 2 uh, from 2008. Uh, geopolymer technology is well established now. It is time to go back to the fundamentals. Uh, the National Science Foundation in the US published uh, this paper for an award, uh, Strong and Multifunctional Geopolymer Composite, a Multiscale Study. Uh, we want to understand the basic behavior of the geopolymer matrix, said Professor Akono. And we needed a supercomputer to carry it out and measure the response of a material from nano to macro level. So uh, they used the Blue Waters, this is one of the uh, uh, biggest uh, supercomputer in the US, provided great resources to bridge the gap with computer power. 
and uh, they are using uh, the uh, geopolymer terminology, the silate with the oligomers, uh, orthosilate, uh, orthosiloxo, dimers, the tetramers, and so forth. And in fact, uh, this uh, high tech study with a super comf uh, computer is confirming the geopolymer terminology that I set in 1976, that is 24 years ago, uh, more than that. And this uh, geopolymer terminology uh, has been uh, ridiculized by cement scientists and they are connected alkali activation terminology with their cash and NASH and so forth. And for that, see the series on why alkali activated materials are not geopolymers. And then we find uh, now new papers, for example, uh, at an atomistic characterization of the interplay between composition, structure, mechanical properties, and amorphous geopolymer binder. This has now on the computer. Uh, the simulation indicates that there is an optimum silicon to aluminum ratio, two or three. This is what we have discovered. The experience shows that it is the ratio two to three that is the best that results in enhanced mechanical properties. Uh, this study provides for the first time valuable insight into the structural mechanism that are responsible for the strength and mechanical properties of the geopolymer by the phase. So now the computers are demonstrating that we were right uh, when we stated that these are the ratio that we have to take in order to achieve good uh, qualities. And they propose this type of three-dimensional uh, polymeric structure. So you have uh, the SI in, uh, in uh, light purple, you have the oxygen in uh, red, the aluminum in yellow, and the cations in uh, blue. And they claim and write, well, this structure closely resembles the original model of geopolymer structure that I proposed 24 years ago. So we didn't have these computers, but we were able to propose it. Today, uh, everything should be proposed by the computer, otherwise it is not science. But we used our brain in order to really understand what we were doing. Uh, we continue 2018, this is very recent, computational material method, atomic scale dynamics and mechanical response of geopolymer binder into nano indentation. So my friends from the uh, geopolymer cement and geopolymer concrete who are far, far, far away from NASH and CASH and ICARA activation. So this is what is about geopolymers. Uh, the choice of geopolymers is chiefly motivated by the fact that they are beginning to gain prominence as an important environmental friendly industrial and engineering material. So, now topic number eight, that is my second topic. It is phosphate-based geopolymer, acidic medium. I always stated that we have two medium, alkaline and acidic. We started with alkaline because the acidic is more difficult to achieve and more to implement. But now it has started and essentially with phosphoric acid. Uh, we have a reaction with uh, aluminum oxide and phosphoric acid that uh, uh, produces ALPO4, aluminum phosphate, but we have also the same reaction with metacholine, and we get also aluminum phosphate plus SiO2 in the matrix. Uh, this is an excerpt from my uh, book in section uh, 13, chapter 13, but for phosphate-based geopolymer. Uh, I just read phosphate, uh, aluminum phosphate species uh, at room temperature or uh, low temperatures, we have hydrated aluminum phosphate that is called varicite, metavaricite, and turned into berlinite, this is uh, aluminum phosphate uh, above 100 to 300 degrees C. And this berlinite will go through several 
uh, transformation when the, the temperature climbs. Uh, what is interesting here is that uh, aluminum phosphate, berlinite, is isostructural with quartz SiO2. That is, it has exactly the same molecular structure. Even if the chemical makeup is different, what you see on the X-ray diffraction diagram is identical to quartz. So when you have a mix of aluminum phosphate and quartz, you only have one diagram. Which one? You don't know. Uh, the transition from one form to the others, to tritridimide and cristobalite, is readily followed by X-ray powder diffraction. And this is the po polymeric structure of aluminum phosphate. We have on the left the helical molecule, that is the one of quartz, that is aluminum phosphate, hydrothrosol to quartz, and on the right uh, the structure of uh, tridomite and cristobalite that we get with aluminum phosphate above 1000 degrees C, and it is a very stable material. So we have uh, a special uh, talk just after uh, this uh, uh, session on phosphate-based geopolymer. Uh, the first important paper on that topic, which I consider the first important, was the one that uh, has been published by uh, our friends uh, Pereira and his team from ANSTO in uh, Sydney, Australia where we have SIL ratio, NIL ratio, phosphate air, they compared metacholine alkali reaction with uh, phosphoric acid metacholine reaction. Uh, metacholine sodium ratio NIL2, uh, metacholine phosphate ratio phosphate to AL1. The material is cast into sealed molds, kept at room temperature for two hours, at 64, 24 hours. This is a sealed container, removing the seals and kept at room temperature. Uh, the uh, sodium uh, polysilate uh, demolded after four days, uh, the metaconine phosphate only after 14 days because it is still very wet. Uh, they presented uh, their physical and mechanical properties. So we have MKGP, this is the sodium based, and the MKS, they just added sand, so it is not important. Uh, MKP, uh, uh, it is a phosphate based. Uh, BD means uh, uh, bulk density, so the sodium based is 1.46, uh, the uh, phosphate based is 1.82, so it is more dense. OP is the open porosity. Uh, sodium base 20, we know that we have a micro porosity, whereas uh, with phosphate base 0, there's no open porosity at all. Uh, CCS, this is the compressive strength, sodium base 72 MPa, and uh, phosphate base 146 MPa. Shrinkage, sodium base practically no shrinkage, phosphate base 4% shrinkage, drying shrinkage. This is the problem. So we have a session on phosphate bis uh, later this morning. Topic number three, the manufacture of uh, geopolymer cement and the manufacture of uh, geopolymer concrete. I present here a paper that I found very interesting, 2017. Comparison of long-term performance between alkali-activated slag and fly ash geopolymer concrete. So they took both systems and looked at it after 540 days. This had not been done before. I show the results. You have here in red the evolution of fly ash based geopolymer, in blue, the evolution of alkali aggregates slag. On the left, flexural strength for the alkali activated slag in blue, it diminishes. And for the 
fly ash based geopolymer it increases for uh, the uh, tensile strength splitting tensile strength yes for the alkali activated slag it remains constant but for the fly ash based geopolymer it increases so even if at the beginning alkali activated slag has higher strength long term durability is not the main characteristic of alkaline activated material. And I show you what is happening. We have here uh, SEM uh, pictures. On the left, we see the CSH gel and the NASH gel or the CASH gel. And after uh, 360 days, we have cracks. After 440 days, we have expanded cracks. This is for alkali activated slag and for geopolymer fly ash based we have a dense matrix and we have no cracks so you understand what I claim and this is the basics of my uh, video series why alkali activated materials are not geopolymers that geopolymers are for long term durability we don't care about the fact that you have at the beginning a lower strength but the strength is still enough for applications. Uh, as far as geopolymer concrete is concerned, uh, we performed uh, detailed uh, research and development programs with institutions and industry partners, and we can claim that uh, we have studied and solved all the parameters. Adjuvant, plasticizers, water reducers, retarders, drying shrinkage, user-friendly one-part GP cement. The problem is that this is the result of joint research and that uh, the results are sometimes uh, proprietary results and they are not published. So we cannot disclose the results but uh, I can tell you something. Uh, you have here a representative of the chemical industry that are attending this conference and they understand quite well what type of adjuvant or plasticizer and water reducer to be tested. When I say to be tested is that each uh, um, raw material will behave differently. So far we did not were capable of selecting and telling precisely this one has to be used. You have, you have a list and with, within this list you have to test the one that will behave properly with your raw material. But you have a list and uh, the chemistry, the chemical industries uh, can help you provided you ask them, provided uh, you are friendly with them. Uh, as far concrete is concerned, uh, you know that we uh, have been achieved uh, uh, for us. Uh, concrete uh, has uh, been uh, the subject of uh, big uh, applications. And uh, we discovered that, in fact, for uh, Wagner's, for example, in Australia, uh, the added value. The business added values is not the selling of the geopolymer concrete. It is rather the commercialization of the geopolymeric hardener and admixtures. Um, and uh, there is a news, very interesting, uh, published uh, in 2017. Uh, the geopolymer based EFC produced by Toowoomba company Wagner's has received uh, so and so thousand dollars under the Advanced Queensland Ignite Ideas Fund uh, to meet growing domestic and international demand. Wagner's will scale up commercial production of tailor-made hardener chemicals used in the top secret formula to produce EFC. So things are moving in Australia. Uh, geopolymer concrete has reached state level approval 
this is recently geopolymer concrete international confirmed for field application they published by Astro Rhodes institution and they published their specification uh, by using this type of equipment and when we read the specification you get general concrete paving recommendation yes recommendations to use geopolymer concrete general concrete paving yes commercial construction design life 40 to 60 years yes uh, pipes yes structural concrete for major infrastructure design life 100 years qualified yes but it should be taken with specific based job by job based on this risk so the bottom line is yes 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 but be careful for special applications so this has been australia now we come to another country india india is strongly starting to be involved with geopolymer concrete i found uh, several news uh, in India, it uh, really started uh, with uh, the project that were initiated with, uh, by Kuran Global Chemicals, that is, who is a producer of uh, sodium and potassium silicates. And uh, this news, 2018, IRC accredits geopolymer concrete road by Netra and TPC. These are the equivalent of the Australian institutions. State-run giant electro electrical power plant, power company, today said the Indian Road Congress has accredited the construction of road by fly ash-based geopolymer concrete developed jointly by Netra and TPC Limited and CSIR, Central Bidding Research Institute, Rilke, recently. Another news, GSW cement capacity expansion by 2018 forms joint ventures with Aussies. The Aussies are Wagner's, Australians. GSC, GSW cement has also entered into a joint venture with Wagner's to launch geopolymer concrete to India. GSW said about 95% of raw materials of the product is either slag which comes out from their steel making process or fly ash that comes out of their power making process called power plants. So we are celebrating our 10th geopolymer camp. Geopolymer cement research and development in alkaline medium is over and reaching global industrialization. We shall continue to transfer our knowledge to new industrial partners, but we have to write a new roadmap for the next decade. And it is time to focus on new fundamental research. And for me, it means to turn back to archaeology. This could generate new ideas and new breakthroughs. For those who ha are uh, aware of uh, uh, all the study that I have carried out on the Egyptian civilization and the pyramids, I met uh, the first Egyptian scientist who lived in 2700 BC, Imhotep, I met with a second Egyptian scientist, 1300 BC, Amenophis son of Apu, who made the huge Memnon Colossus. We met with the first Roman architect, Vitruvius, 50 BC, and uh, we understood quite well how the Roman concrete was done. Then we are now leaving the Middle East and Mediterranean region civilization 
and we are looking after ancient geopolymer in South American monuments. Those that have been built 600 our era. It is a joint research program, program between the Geopolymer Institute and the Universidad Católica San Pablo in Arequipa in Peru and I will present the first result for Tiwanaku, Pumapunku, Bolivia this afternoon. Uh, just show you the conclusion. Uh, we are focusing on, so you have Cusco, Peru, this is on the Altiplano, the Lake Titicaca, Tiwanaku, and Pumapunku. Tiwanaku is famous for its gate of the sun. This is what people know about, nothing else. But we will not focus on the gate of the sun. We will focus on a group of megalithic slabs that are the largest in the American continent. They were built around AD 600, that is 1,400 years ago, destroyed AD 900, 500 years before the Inca Empire. It was not the Incas that built this, it was earlier. Uh, the Gate of the Sun in Tuanaku is made out of andesite, it is a volcanic rock. Whereas for the Pumapunku temple, we have red sandstone, that is a cement, sedimentary stone. And we will find two different methods. One, a geopolymer in alkaline medium for the red sandstone megalites, and second, a geopolymer system in acidic medium for the grey andesite structures. If you look at uh, the uh, method number one, the red sandstone megalith, we have the four big slabs, number one, number two, number three, number four. These are one-piece megalithic blocks, roughly eight meters by eight meters, weighing for number one, under 30 tons, number two, 180 tons, number three, it is totally broken and parts are vanished, and number four, 150 tons, monolithic blocks. Uh, soon, very soon after uh, they have been uh, constructed, these blocks were broken by an earthquake. And they repaired with cramp sockets filled with metal, copper and bronze, that obviously is no longer there. Uh, we have presently a paper that is submitted for review in materials paper on the topic, titled Ancient Geopolymer in South American Monument, XRD, Scanning Electron Microscopy and Petrographic Evidence, by myself, Louis Wanam and Ralph on the subject, we arrived to the following conclusion. Uh, the thin section of a sample taken from a Pumapunku red sandstone monument shows grain boundaries made of a thick fluidal ferrocylate matrix. To our knowledge, this feature is very unusual in sandstone formed geologically it is a unicum and supports the idea of artificial sandstone geopolymer concrete. We have blocks, concrete blocks, there. 1,400 years old sandstone geopolymer concrete. But in addition, we have smaller elements that are lying there which have puzzling structures and they are made of andesitic rock, volcanic rock and they are really puzzling. They have a most hardness between six and seven that is like quartz and they did not have any tools. 
And this is generating, generating crazy news about the fact humans were not capable of doing this. Only the aliens or the super civilizations were the builders of this site. When you go to Peru, and when you go to Bolivia and ask touristic guides, this is what they told, are telling you. How were such perfect cuts made with simple stone tool, with a material that is so hard? More extravagant feature. We have this stone, it is small, but it contains 20 holes drilled with precision 30 centimeter deep inside the hard stone. There exists no instrument capable of doing this. Our scientific investigation was carried out with a thin section, scanning electron microscopy, and for scanning electron microscopy, we were surprised to find features like these ones, uh, EDS, organic matter. And organic matter in a volcanic rock. Impossible. We'll get the detailed explanation this afternoon in the ancient technology session. We'll have a video of the talk available on the internet in the next month. This is the team that was on site, a geologist from uh, uh, Arequipa and Ralph from the Geopolymer Institute. This has been my state of the geopolymer for today. Thank you very much.